we're beginning? Do we see that there? Do we see that there? Excellent, excellent. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, I just want to welcome all of you to uh, this live stream where we'll be talking and sharing about righteousness by faith, specifically the 1888 message of righteousness by faith, Christ our righteousness. We ask you for, our, for forgiveness. We said we want to start at 7 p.m., we came a little bit late. We had a couple of things that deterred us a little bit, but nevertheless, we are here and we are determined by the grace of God to be able to share with you some very important points from this message that has completely transformed and changed our lives personally and that has caused us and propelled us, or as Paul says, the love of Christ constraineth me. It has moved us to go and to be transformed, to share this message everywhere it is that we go. It has really changed our life, and I believe that it's going to change your life as well. So I want to welcome you all. A couple of things it is that we're going to look at. Right before we have a word of prayer, a couple of things it is that we're going to look at. Number one, before I even mention those things, what I want you to do is I want you to do this. I want you right now to share this with all of your brothers and sisters and friends. Take a moment to share, with, share this with everyone it is that you know, because this is of the utmost import that every single Seventh-day Adventist knows what happened in 1888? As important as it is for us to understand 1844, it is just as important mm -hmm. for us to understand what was going on, the happenings at, in 1888. It wasn't just another general conference. It was probably, it was the most important general conference ever. Most important. The most, because in that conference, God gave a most precious message. So take the time, even right now, to share this on various different uh, pages, Facebook pages or whatever, share this uh, via WhatsApp, via your phone, text messaging, and whatever. Let us make sure that as many people as possible can hear this. And nevertheless, whether or not we participate in, the, in evangelism and in sharing this, the gospel will lighten this entire world. It is going to happen. It is going to be done. So I want to get into it. What are some of the things it is that we're going to be taking a look at? What are some of the uh, 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 thoughts that we're going to consider? Well, we're going to take a look at some of the books that helped us in understanding the 1888 message of righteousness by faith. We're going to take a look at some of those books, because often you might just hear 1888, 1888, and then you wonder, well, where can I go to read about it? Where can I go to learn more about it? So we're going to take a look at some of the books that have transformed our life and some of the books that have helped us in our understanding of the truth, so that when we hear someone say something, we're able to detect whether it's right or whether it is wrong. We're also going to take a look at some of the vital points of the message itself. We've got to understand the vital points of the message itself. We're also going to take a look at what the message actually is to our church. How does it relate to us as a church? Okay, so some of the, those are some of the main things it is that we're going to look at. Is there anything else that I'm forgetting that we ought to mention that we're going to, that we're going to touch on in the message, in our, in our study, in our conversation tonight? Well, we have a, a lot of subjects to deal with. Mm -hmm. Because 1888 is uh, it's not a new message, but it's the advancing experience of what should prepare the people of God for translation. And in this message, we are going to look at specifically Revelation 18, verse 1 to 4, talking about the lightning angel that comes now with power. Mm. And... Uh, it's a very, very crucial because almost 99% of Adventists are focused on only the three angel message. Mm. It is the fourth one that must come to empower the third angel and to let it swell up to the level of the loud cry and form the 144,000 and feel. Yeah. So we can't, the great contributors cannot be finished with the three angel message. Mm. The fourth angel must come. It's a very, very important point that we don't talk about. Okay. All of us stop on three angel message. Three angel message. And we are going to see very soon. It's a question the third angel could not finish the work. Mm. Mm. So we need a fourth angel. Th there is some so serious points. So in um, 1888, yeah. the fourth angel showed up. Amen. It was Christ himself yeah. revealing the last message his people needed to know yeah. so that he can do the last work on their behalf. Okay. 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 So it's very important for us to know that. There is a fourth angel yes. that yeah. we have to pay attention to. It's a very, very deep message. You know what? Yeah. I think it, 
it's important right now that we get into a word of prayer as we're going to dig deep into this, as we're really going to delve into this a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, brothers and sisters, again, we ask that you share this with everyone that you know. Share your comments as well. We are able to see them. Do share your comments, and we, and we do want to consider it. If we make a statement or say something and we don't quote it, maybe we forget the quote, but we think it's, it, just, it just has to be said, just put it in the comments. Because people that are watching, they're going to need, they're going to, need to know like, where are you getting this from, where are you hearing this from. So definitely share that in the comments below. Um, and if, if you can't hear us clearly, do let us know so that we can adjust ourselves as well. Maybe we need to bring the mic closer or whatever. Um, and we're going to keep it moving from there. So God bless you. And let's begin with the word of prayer, Brother Paul, if you don't mind starting us off. Our Father and our God who art in heaven, Lord, your word says that where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst. And so, Father, as the three of us and our brethren online join together this evening to discuss the most precious message that you sent in the year 1888, I'm asking that in a very special sense, dear God, you will abide with us. Lord, I pray that you will bring to our minds uh, understanding of this thing, dear God. Father, help us to see this evening that what happened in 1888, dear Lord, is of the most important at this time, the most important significance at this time. Father, we're seeking for victory somewhere afar off, and you're directing your people back to the message of A.T. Jones and E.J. Wagner in the year 1888. Father, help us to pick up that message right there and to succeed in Jesus' name this evening. We ask this in his worthy name. Amen. 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 Sister Abigail, God bless you. Happy Sabbath. Sister Jadita, happy Sabbath. God bless you also. So in beginning to look at this, I'll just share a couple of thoughts. There's, there's a statement that, we, that we're all very familiar with um, from Testimonies and Ministers, page 91 in paragraph 2. Mm-hmm. And everyone that knows or is familiar with this subject, before I even mention that, you realize that when they were sharing these messages, Sister White, she said these were waves of truth. It was a wave of the gospel, a wave of God's grace overcame the people. It overcame the people. And she often said that whenever they were uh, sharing these messages, it was her, uh, A.T. Jones and E.J. Wagner, after the Minneapolis conference, when they went out to different places throughout the world. There were instances where she said that they were teaching at a school, and these students are between the ages of probably uh, 13 to 15, 16. They were teaching at a school. You know what Sister White said? She said that... At the end of these meetings, every single soul was converted. Amen. I said, wait a minute. That's powerful. 13, 15 year old kids. Every single person was converted. I'm like, does that happen in your church? Does that happen in my church? Does that happen in our homes? Does that happen in our family where everyone is converted? Do you know what it means to be converted? And so when I read these things about this message and what was going on back then, I'm like, Lord, where's the power? Are we, are we to expect that to happen within our circles today? I think we should expect that. And that is what this message is able to do. So let me read a little bit from uh, Testimonies to Ministers. And I want to talk about it just a little bit. And we could converse about it a little bit. And um, it says on page 91, paragraph 2, it says, The Lord, in his great mercy, sent a most precious message to his people through elders Wagner and Jones. Most precious message. She didn't say that it was sent through her. She said it was sent through elders Wagner and Jones. This message was to bring more prominently before the world the uplifted Savior, the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. It presented justification through faith in the surety. It invited the people. It invited the people. To receive the righteousness of Christ, which is made manifest in obedience to all the commandments of God. Many had lost sight of Jesus. They needed to have their eyes directed to his divine person, his merits, and his changeless love for the human family. All power is given into his hands, that he may dispense rich gifts unto men, imparting the priceless gift of his own righteousness to the helpless human agent. This is the message that God commanded to be given to the world. It is the third angel's message, which is to be proclaimed with a loud voice and attended with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, his spirit in a large measure. 
So she makes it abundantly clear right here. By the way, she was actually there. So we're not reading from someone who wasn't there, right? It, she was actually there. She attended these meetings. She was partaking in it. She was listening to the messages. And she said that this is the message that God commanded to be given. Like God said, I want this message to be given. He commanded for this message to be given. And it is this message that is to be proclaimed and uh, with a loud voice and attended with the outpouring of his Holy Spirit in a large measure. Um, in that book uh, that we're reading, because we're, we're, we're going to be covering the 1888 message of righteousness by faith throughout this entire year. And we're beginning by looking through this book. I wanted to focus more throughout our conversation here on, um, on, on, on the books of Jones and Wagner so that the people can actually go to their books and see. But I, and, and, I, and I was saying that because, like, Robert Whelan, I believe he's telling the truth. He quotes them a lot and he explains it. Amen. But one might say, well... You know, he's coloring what they're saying, and so you should have, like, uh, you, should have, you should be colorblind. Just look at exactly what they're saying. So that's why I want to highlight them, but I read them before I read him. And so after reading them, I see that he squares up with it, and he showed some things that, that I actually missed, and, or, and he made it clear. So anyway, we're going through this book throughout the, throughout the year. So, so, so Sister White said that Jones and Wagner, that they were to proclaim this message, that they were proclaiming this message, and it was to attend, come with the uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit in large measure. And Robert Willen, in this book, he mentions how um, there is something called the Wailing Wall, right? Mm. Where the Jews, they would go to the Wailing Wall yes. and, 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 and they would pretty much cry because they're, they're, they're praying for the Messiah. The Messiah. They're, pr they're praying for him to come. And Willen said that he wishes that he can go to one of them and tap them on the back of their shoulder and say, look, he already came. He already came. Yeah. And that's the same thing for us, though. Mm -hmm. There's the same application for us because we're praying day by day, Sabbath after Sabbath. I believe, right? We're praying for the latter rain. We want the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in large measure. And the Lord is telling us, I was sending that back in 1888. I, I was sending that back there. If you want that, in order to get this that he's trying to give us right now, we need to get that that he was trying to give us back then. Yes. And so we need to go back Absolutely. to those messages because she says that it is supposed to be attended with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a large measure. There's no other message that is to be attended with the outpouring of the this Holy Spirit the in large measure. This is the message. So I asked, like, what are, we, what are we doing about it? You know, there was a point that you made about um, the conversion of the young people, yeah. that every soul was converted. It reminds me of a statement where uh, Sister White says that during the loud cry, thousands yeah. would be converted yes. Yes. in a day. True conversion. This message gets it done. When she said in uh, Testimonies to Ministers, uh, page 91, the paragraph you just read, when she said that many had lost sight of Jesus, I don't want us to miss the significance of that. Because the Bible says in John 12, John 12 and verse 32, that I, if I should be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Now, nowadays we're, we're, we're trying to find new programs, new ideas, better ways to reach the young people, to call them out of Babylon, to get them interested in church, interested in Bible study, interested in finishing the work. But the method has always been simple. Yeah. It's direct our eyes back to the only man who yes. will draw us out of these things. Amen. Jesus says, I will do it. And so, you know, in 1888, the fact that our eyes needed to be um, shifted back to Christ, that our focus needed to be redirected to Jesus Christ, tells us that all of the things that God had given us, wonderful as they are, mm -hmm. Sabbath included, um, these things had become so large at the expense of the one person who gave them life in the first place. Yeah. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Right. He Amen. is the blood in the sanctuary. Amen. He right, is right. the reason why, you know, the robe of righteousness, dress reform. Yeah, yeah. And so until Christ is given his preeminence in the message again, yeah. which is precisely what Jones and Wagner were sent to do in 1888, until Christ is given the preeminence again, we are going to remain here uh, with our own wailing wall, mm. seeking the power to finish the work, seeking the efficiency to finish the work that was there in the message. Yeah. I remember Sister White said that, um, that, that, we preach the law, the law, the law. Dry as the hills of Gilboa. And, 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 and it's really significant that she would say something like that because, you know, the law is important. Very. Very. Sin is a transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. The law is important. Paul says in, in Romans chapter 7 where he says that I would not have known sin lest it were for the law. He says that the law is holy, just, and good. So the law is, so, is, 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 is vital. It's essential in the Christian walk. But, but, but there's a point where the law our preoccupation with the law has not helped us because we have lifted it up so high above the lawgiver himself. Right. And as you're saying, we needed our eyes to be redirected to Christ, 
to the lawgiver in order that the principle of the law can become a functioning principle in our mind, right. which, is, which, is, which is pretty much what the, at, at the core of the 1888 message, um, Hebrews 8 and verse 10, where God says, I will put my laws in their hearts, in their hearts and in their minds. It would, be, it would be how you live. It would be by that very thing. It sounds like you were going to say something, Pastor Cook. <laughs> I don't want to hold you back. Oh, definitely. Um, I would like to read something quick from um, last day event page 210, paragraph 1. Okay. It said, the third angel message will not be comprehended. The light which will enlighten the earth with its glory will be called a false light by those who refuse to walk in it advancing glory. It's not a new message. It's a message moving to the a very advancing glory. Mm -hmm. Now, if we are only looking at the three angel message, but there is a light that has to come to give a deeper understanding to the message. So the, the fourth angel revelation 18 is just like the glasses. It helps you to read better and understand better. Mm -hmm. It opens up your understanding. You see, like the rabbi, they have the Bible every day. Right. But the whole Bible is the person. Mm. Mm. Is the person Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. When they reject that person, they could not understand I'm the word. Keep my clothes. Yeah. They, they you know? Testify, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Because, yes. See, we, we are caught up into this form of religion. Things to do and things not to do. Right. But God wants us to be. Yeah. To be a person. It's not a list of things to do. You know but what? He wants you to be someone who live by a life. Let me read. And when that life 18. is in that, like right now, nobody yeah. needs to tell you to breathe. Right. Because that is the law that regulates your physical life. You have to breathe. You have to eat. You have to drink. You yeah. have to move. Yes. The same thing for spiritual life. God wants us to be born in divine family, to have the life of Jesus in us. That is the mind of Christ. Yeah. And when you receive that mind, is gonna flow because mm -hmm. it become the the law that regulate that that life. Right. For example, in if uh, Romans seven, Paul was trying to please God. Right. He know what is right. He want to do what is right, but he forgot. You can't do right by yourself. Right. So the three angel message telling you there's a judgment. The Babylon is falling. Don't take the mark. Do do do. do. But now the fourth come tell you exactly how you face it. So in Romans 8, Paul understood. Romans 8 verse 2 now said, oh, now I understand. The law of the spirit of life in Christ free me from the law of sin and death. And death. There are two laws. So in another world, let's say you want to overcome any particular sin in your life. Don't try to resist that sin. That's the wrong battle. Mm. Walk in the spirit, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. If you are walking in the spirit, you will not fulfill the laws of the flesh. the flesh. Okay? So if let's say you're trying to avoid to eat what is wrong, but you're not eating what is right, mm. you're going to end up sick. So it's a life message. It's not just a, a, a doctrine to lead you to some ways of behavior, things to do, and things to avoid. Right, right. No, it's right. about life. Yeah. Okay? It's about the law of life that was in Jesus. Yeah. I, I really want all to get that. I, it's a law <laughs> that is in the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when that come into you, it become a law of life. Yes. So yes. Christ brought a lot, a law to yes. us. It's yes. a new law. Right. With a new person. Yes. So the we all have... We, the first Adam mixed up, mm -hmm. and we pick it up. Right. He come as a second Adam. Right. New nature. You blend human and divine. We function by new law. Have a new mind. Divine mind in a sinful body. It, that, it brings a whole formula for victory. It okay. You, it you, cannot you, fail. Let's break up a little. Let's break up a little bit of what you're saying because mm -hmm. you said something. Mm -hmm. Like you, 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 you just said something extremely powerful. The message. It, yes, <laughs> how is the person, mm -hmm. and and we've been considering that over and over again. But I like like that's why when you brought up Revelation chapter eighteen, I said let me let me just read that because mm -hmm. because it's it's gonna continue to become brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I like how you said the person, the person. because because it be, 
Because Revelation 18, it says in verse 1, it says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was enlightened with his glory. And so, and so, and so, this angel represents you and it represents me. It represents us. It represents people. Galatians 4.14, um, Paul is likened as, a, a, likened as an angel. 1 Samuel chapter uh, 29 and verse 9, David is likened to an angel by a man named Akish. So this angel represents people. It represents us. So it represents a person. And this angel comes down from heaven having great power. We know that the power, we've gone through this over and over again. The power represents the gospel, right? The power represents the gospel. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God. Right? And this angel coming down from heaven, the earth is enlightened by that angel, by the glory of that angel, by the glory that is within that angel. Okay? And that glory represents the life of Christ. John chapter 1 and verse 4, in him was life and his life, and his life was the light of men. The earth is enlightened with the life of Christ within his people. And so, um, and by the way, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, right? Um, it's coming down from heaven that represents the people of God being in the most holy place with Christ. So this is the most holy place experience of God and his people lightening this earth with the Shekinah glory of God from the most holy place. That's why this message is even better than, than the message that any other denomination brings. I didn't say this denomination is better than any other denomination. I'm saying the message is. Because in fact it is. And, and, and so all this to say that when you were just bringing up how the message it is the person of Christ in you, it is because the earth is not lightened by people talking. It is not, though that is a part of, of the work, but the message is not, is, the earth is not lightened by people talking. It is more demonstration than noise. Because in, in, in the three angels' message of Revelation chapter 14, it says that, that, and in Matthew 24, 14, where Jesus says that this gospel will go throughout the whole world as a witness, it's a witness. It is showing something. It is showing the life of Christ reproduced in his people. And that's why it's so important for us to Realize that it's not just about reading and reading, and though reading is extremely important, you're not going to make it. You, mm, reading is essential in this thing. You are not going to make it too far without spending time in the Word of God because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. And it's not merely just by, you know, thing, but hearing, prayer, etc. So the person is so important for us to always realize the person of Christ, his, his Holy Spirit in us has to be reproduced. And this message that was given in 1888, it teaches just that. It goes just into the details and the mechanism of, of, of how it's done. The, the unity of divinity and of humanity. I, I want to share a few more thoughts, but I'll, I'll let my brothers go. Go, 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 go. go. Okay, then, then let, me, let, me, let me bring this, point, this other point up then. Because as we read, the 1888 message. Somebody says, okay, what, what, is there a book? Because you guys have all this excitement. What books are you guys reading from? So there's a book I have right over here. It is the 1895 sermons, all right? These are the 1895 sermons. In the General Conference in 1895, A.T. Jones, he brought up the message. In 1888, they didn't actually write down the messages. They didn't write it down. So we don't have the exact sermons that were given in 1888. But they have been reprinted in shorthand. There was somebody that wrote some things. They have been reprinted um, and formed into the books. Uh, I have them right here. Uh, Christ and His Righteousness by, a, uh, by E.J. Wagner and uh, Consecrated Way to Christian Perfection by A.T. Jones. So Consecrated Way to Christian Perfection by A.T. Jones and Christ and His Righteousness by E.J. Wagner. You must read these books. These are like little cookies. You must read these books. They're delicious and they're great. But I'm highlighting, I'm highlighting the 1895 sermons because in here, A.T. Jones speaks about, um, he speaks about how Christ became us. He speaks about that point, how Christ became us. And I love the messages where he talks about that. It's in, I would recommend that you read from message sermon number 11 and on. Because those are where he really gets into like a full cry, reviewing what he was going over in 1888, but with more maturity. And, and, he, and he goes into the point where Christ became us. And I, I remember when I was studying this, I was in the train when I was reading this. I was in the train. I was going off to school and stuff, had a decently long ride to school. So I would just be reading, reading, reading. And I'm reading this thing. And I'm reading how Christ became us. And then Jones 
breaks down that what it means is it's not, it's not that Christ became them. It's that Christ, he became you. And then I started thinking, I got afraid for a minute because I'm like, is this brother trying to say that I'm God, that I'm, you know, whatever? He's he like, no, 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 no. No, Christ entered into your experience. He partook of your humanity. He partook of your weaknesses, meaning that he knows and understands the difficulties it is that you go through day by day. He was tempted in all points like as you are, yet without sin. And when I saw that, he was tempted like as I am. He was in my shoes. He, 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 he seen what I, he, he felt what I felt. He knows what I, what I feel. He understands the, the, the pull that, that, that I feel. Because he became us. He, he became a man like, like you and like me. When I saw that, I was, I was flabbergasted. And I, I'm, I'm reading this on the train. I'm like, do you guys see this? <laughs> I'm wondering if other people see what I just saw, if they've experienced what I just experienced. Because I always wonder, like, why do people think about Jesus all the time? They're always singing Christ and this and that and this and that and this and that. And now I have a reason to sing. I have a reason to share. There's something in me that I just want to burst out. And everybody has to know about this thing because I saw Christ as my personal savior. For me, like he saved the world. He saved the world. If I spent the book but, of the rest of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but he saved me. And I just thought that was like the best news in the universe. Changed my life completely. Completely. Say something here. Yeah. Christ and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. What is the righteousness of Christ? Mm. Usually we just see Christ die on the cross. And uh, he just covered us with his blood. Right. And our sin are forgiven. That's what I always thought. And then uh, we are good to go. We right. are saved by grace. Right. And we just need to believe that it's done. But it's way more than that. Okay. He came not to save us with our sins. He came to save us from our sin. Now, what was how Christ obeyed? So Christ the righteousness of Christ is his life of obedience. Mm -hmm. His life of obedience. Now, he is the second Adam, according to 1 Corinthians 15, from verse 45 to 50. Mm -hmm. Even from verse 20 to 23, you see the same thing. As the second Adam, we are people, we are, as a Christian, we are born after the order of the second Adam. Mm -hmm. So when you are born of him, born again. you have his life. Right. Now, let's read quickly, please. Can you read for yeah. me um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11? To read exactly what is the real meaning of Christian life and what is the real meaning of doing to be covered by his righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. so 2 Corinthians 4, verse uh, 10 and 11. Oh, yeah. It says, And bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Mm -hmm. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Okay, so the life mm -hmm. of Jesus mm -hmm. must be manifest in our mortal body. Right. That's called the mystery of godliness. Yeah. And that is done by the Holy Spirit. Yes. It's a blending humanity and a divinity. Look at how Christ was formed. Not created, was formed, was made. Yes, very it, it was the Spirit of God overshadowed Mary. Mm -hmm. So with the Holy Spirit plus the sinful egg of Mary. You blend it and you make a new man. So a T. John really called it new man. Right. I mean new order. Yes. Now. What this will do to the Christian? What was the law that was in Christ that allowed him to live the life so that we can live the same life? You see, when I studied the case of Job, God declared Job perfect. God declared Job perfect. perfect. Yes. Now he allows Satan to go test him. Right. Now, we can see here that Satan was hurting the flesh. Yes. But can Job keep himself from falling? No. So how did God keep him from falling? He, his mind was surrendered to God. Yeah. Because you are your mind. See, when you are sleeping, who is sleeping, who is dreaming? Mm. Your body is sleeping, but your spirit is dreaming. Your mind is functioning. Right. So you can receive information from God. Yes. 
So when you yield that mind completely to divine power, the flesh can be suffering so much. But as long the mind is yielded to the all the might of God, it will keep it from sinning. Amen. Amen. That's what happened to Stephen. He was receiving all of this pain from the stoning. But nothing can distract him from beholding the love of God. It's very deep. Can hmm. you imagine? You are in pain, receiving the stone on your mouth, your, everywhere. And your head is so painful. Yeah. But the man, his mind is fixed. By beholding, we are changed, changed even into the same, same image. image. Now from imagine if a Stephen turned his mind from God and looking at these people who are stoning him. What will happen? The flesh would take over. Oh. He so would Christ, retaliate. He, he, br he brought he down to us the law of victory. Right, right. Okay? So people experienced that in the past. Job experienced exactly the same thing. But he didn't, he didn't, we, we don't understand it. Mm -hmm. We just see the man suffer, suffer, and later on he didn't sin. But Christ brought the law, how it works. Yeah. It's a yielding the mind to God. That whatever happens to the flesh, the God will walk through the mind to keep all the claim of the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, for example, in Matthew 4, when Christ was tempted, if you read the story, it says that when all the kingdom was shown to him, the desire to be a king aroused in him. Yeah. He wanted to be a king. But when he brought that to the mind, that is controlled by God, mm. that is always brought into captivity to the Father, mm -hmm. guess what? The Father says, this can work. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he feels the urge, the desire, yeah. but it was brought to the captivity to the mind yeah. of the Father. Why? According to John 6, verse 50. Seven, mm -hmm. he gave us the law. He said, I live by the Father mm -hmm. so that you might live by me. Yeah. Meaning, you, any thought come in, it's not sin. Yeah. The sinful thought is not sin in itself. Mm -hmm. But when it comes, you bring it captive to God, and God will say yes, or God will say no. Joan, Joan says that mm -hmm. in the 1895 sermons, she mm -hmm. says that, 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 that all, the, all the pride of, of Alexander the Great mm -hmm. and of Napoleon because Jesus died for them. Mm -hmm. Jesus became them also. Mm -hmm. So all their pride rose up in Christ. Mm -hmm. But when it met the mind of Christ, mm -hmm. then the mind of Christ is the mind that keeps self under, that mm -hmm. keeps the flesh under. It under. says, no, God's will alone. Mm -hmm. So in a practical life, let's say you did something very wrong in your life. Yeah. Now you are beholding what you did wrong. You get weaker. Yeah, by beholding you become changed. You, you, you feel that you betray yourself. Right. You feel how much you're trying harder, but you keep failing. More you behold what is wrong, discouragement will be the result. Mm. But if you say, yes, I did this thing wrong, but I was forgiven for that. Now the knowledge that I was forgiven, I said, wow, Lord, you are so good. Mm. You, his goodness Le is going to lead you now yes, yes. to repent. Yeah. And then, step to cry, page 59, paragraph 1. Mm. The, the repentance will go further to lead to reformation. Amen. So you are not beholding your sin, but you are beholding the solution for your sin. Amen. Do we get the point right now? It's like you are sick. You spend all your time, like, I'm so pain, I'm suffering so much. You have the medicine right there. Instead of trying to be focused on your pain, drink the medicine. Just take the medicine. Yeah. Right. That's what we're trying to talk about. Yeah. So the mind of God, like Christ is always conscious that he took upon himself our sinful flesh. Yeah. That will always pull him to sin. When the mind is yielded to the control of God, the mind keeps down all the claim of the flesh. That's how you live the victorious life. Yeah. You always feel the urge to do what is wrong. But if you let the mind be the mind of Christ. So what is the mind of Christ? Mm. He submit to the Father willingly unto death. So if you can bring every thought to God before you make any decision, yeah. he will say, no, this is not right. This is right. This is not right. Yes. And, and the, the good news is when we submit, there's something mysterious happen at the very moment we submit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Desire of Ages 3. 324, 324 paragraph 4. Yes. When we submit to Christ, mm -hmm. when the soul submits itself to God, a new, a power, new power comes takes in. possession, the new heart. That the same thing happens to Christ. Supernatural work. You see, in, in Gethsemane, it is the point where the thought come up. Father, I can't drink this cup. Mm. I already want to give up. It's a thought. It's not a decision yet. Right. Uh, so he brought the thought captive to the Father. But may your will be, be done. The instant he said, may your will be 
done. Mm. Gabriel swiftly came. Amen. Under the command of the Father, you have to support that man Amen. quickly. Why? Uh, uh, because he said, may your will be done. So God's <laughs> will is to make us yeah. perfect. Yeah. God's will is to keep us from falling. Yeah. So the answer is saying, may your will be done. His power is supplied Amen. to keep you from falling. Amen. So the 18 and 8 brings you to a practical Christian life. Yes, yes. Not just struggle with your sin, but go take the medicine. Amen. Which is? Submitting to his power to keep you from falling. You know, when, when, you're, saying, when you're saying about taking the medicine, yeah. right, it's because, it's because we as individuals are sick, but also as a church collectively. And um, the, 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 the doctor, mm -hmm. or the great medical missionary, put it that way, mm -hmm. the great medical missionary, he has diagnosed us mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation and chapter 3, the church of the Laodiceans, he has diagnosed us, but he has also given a remedy he has given a remedy to our sickness, to our disease, to, uh, uh, to the defect it is that we are suffering. He has given us the remedy, and it, it behooves us to, to receive that, to receive the counsel of the faithful and the true witness. Very important that we get that. Amen. I want to I focus a little bit on what Pastor Coco was saying just then, the importance of our focus. Yeah. The importance of whether or not we're studying the symptoms of the sickness or if we're actually taking the cure. And I remember, um, I believe it was 2012 going into 2013, the concept of victory over sin was completely new to me. Mm -hmm. Completely new to me. All I knew was that there was a Savior in the most holy place. There was a work to be done. And, and, and Lord, it's not done yet. So I need, it, yeah. I need this thing, and I need it done for me. The 1888 message takes a problem that is so complicated in the mind and wonderfully simplifies it. Amen. Sister White says that the gospel is a wonderful simplifier. simplifier of life's problems. And what I like about this message, um, Brother Jones spoke about it. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, the Bible says this. It says, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Amen. I'm going to read that one more time. Yes. The Bible says, now thanks be unto God, which always. Always. That's at all times. That's not sometimes. That's not sometimes. That is always, that is at all times. Thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Mm -hmm. Brother Jones spent some time really unpacking this text um, in the 1895 sermons, I believe it was. And he, he was just really showing the fact that if Christ causes us to always triumph in Christ, mm -hmm. and the gospel teaches us that all men are where? In Christ, in Christ, then all men may always have that triumph That's right. in Christ. Yeah. It's not a matter of should we have victory or can we have victory. It's a matter of will you have victory. Yeah. It's there. And the Father causes it to be so mm -hmm. always. And so just understanding concepts like that from, from the 1888 message took me from a, a, a state of, how would I describe it? I was, I was, I was perplexed. <laughs> you know, because I'm thinking about the most holy place and God is going to, my life is going to pass in judgment someday before him and he's going to be looking at me and I am this way and that way. Right. And I, I find perplexity. But the Bible says that thou will keep him in perfect, in perfect peace, peace whose mind, mind is stayed, stayed upon, upon thee. thee. And so this brings us back to the significance of the 1888 message directing our eyes back to the man mm. that gives us that peace mm. during this day of atonement. Mm. It's that peace alone that allows the Christian to stand with Christ. Yeah. He had that piece. You know, that's a very key thing. You, in bringing up the Day of Atonement, that's very important. That's sanctuary language. Mm -hmm. um, that's the sanctuary. That is uh, God's picture or, or, or mood or way of showing us how he saves us. And with the Day of Atonement, you see, the 1888 message, why it's better, why it's the, the, the best message. Best. Amen. Uh, this is why I said the most precious message. He was under inspiration. She said the most precious message is because it coupled justification by faith with the cleansing of the sanctuary. It coupled, now by the way, justification by faith, Martin Luther brought that back there in Wittenberg, right? And we're told that that was the message that was lightening the dark ages. He brought that, but he didn't have the fullness of the thing. Then you have all the other reformers that are coming that are highlighting righteousness by faith, justification by faith. You have Wesley, you have John Calvin, etc. They weren't perfect in their understanding and their explanation thereof. Nevertheless, they brought attention to the matter, and that's what we've got to do. That's what we, we have to bring attention to. This. Every single Seventh day Adventist needs to be talking about the message that was brought in 1888. Every single, let us, we need to have more conversations about this thing. But anyway, they were bringing this message. Now, this message of justification by faith, coupled with what Christ is doing right now in the most holy place, 
it, it makes it very relevant to us right now because it's what's going on right now. So that's why, you know, often some will share with me um, or I'll watch some videos and I'll see some people have back and forth and stuff that, you know, this minister or this church, they, they, they don't preach victory or sin. They say we're going to sin until Jesus Christ comes back and this and that and this and that. Now, that is false. We're not going to sin until Jesus Christ comes back. Um, but we have to understand where the person who is saying that, where are they coming from? Because not everybody has pure malice in their heart. So where are they coming from when they say that we're going to have, or why are they saying that? They're saying that because they don't understand the cleansing of their sanctuary. They're not familiar with what goes on during the Day of Atonement. And so therefore, they're going to say things like, we're going to sin until Jesus Christ comes back. But when we understand justification by faith in connection with the cleansing of the sanctuary, we realize that the time that we're living in right now, if we have the experience of justification by faith, Christ is going to bring us to a place where we are going to be cleansed. We, these temples, are going to be cleansed. These earthen vessels, we are going to be cleansed. Even as Christ is cleaning the most holy place, he's going to clean us for, in order for the most holy place to be cleansed, and we'll have that experience. Jones talks about that quite a bit, actually, in... Um, Consecrated way to Christian perfection in uh, in the in the last few chapters. That's chapter chapter twelve is pretty good, but it's chapter thirteen, the transgression of abomination and de desolation, where he goes through Daniel chapter eight, but particularly chapter fourteen and um, and chapter fifteen, the cleansing of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. He goes through and he breaks it down. He explains. He makes simple connections. The sanctuary is being cleansed. That's the removal of sin. We're bringing the message of justification by faith, which gives you victory over sin practically day by day. That's what Christ is doing. That's the experience that we are to have today right now. So it's perfectly connected, perfectly united. Sister White saw it. And the question is, do we see it? This is the message that's to be attended with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a large measure. There was, a point, there was a point that you made. I want to jump on it before you, you bring up other points because mm -hmm. I'm all over the place in my head right now. <laughs> Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Yes. Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. The Bible says... And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed, right? In this book here, Lessons on Faith, E.J. Wagner goes, uh, he goes into the Sabbath. He begins to explain the significance of the Seventh-day Sabbath. It's not about works. It's all about justification by faith, and it has always been about justification by yeah. faith. There's a, a, a text in the Bible, John 15, verse 3, I believe it is. Unto 2,300 days, then shall oh, yeah. the sanctuary be cleansed, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then in John chapter 15, John 15 and verse 3, Jesus said this. He says, now ye are clean. How? Through, Through the, the word, word which I have spoken unto Thank you. Me. Jesus says when? Now. Now. He now. says, now what? Are you clean? clean. Yes. Is, this, is this a message for the most holy place? Oh, yeah. So E.J. Wagner, in this book, Lessons mm. on Faith, he begins to explain the difference in the Day of Atonement between a Seventh-day Adventist who is a true creationist and a Seventh-day Adventist who has the mind of an evolutionist. Mm -hmm. And he began to explain how, you know, Christ, uh, we're in 2019, so Christ has been in the most holy place 174 years, yeah. going on 175 now. And during this time, God has been seeking to do one thing, to create in us a clean heart and to renew a right spirit in us. That's a work of creation. Yeah. Redemption and creation are one and the same. It's Definitely. a work of creation. Mm -hmm. But in Genesis, we see that the same God did so in seven days with just the word. Mm -hmm. And in the most holy place now, at the very end of the story, we find that it's taking him over 174 years mm -hmm. to do so with the same word. So what's, where's the difficulty? Right. Brother Wagner broke it down very simple. It is in the way that we receive that word. John 15, verse 3, Jesus says, very simple. He says, now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Now, if we take his word as it is, mm -hmm. then when are we cleansed? Right then and there. Right there where we receive it, right? Yeah. And so from that very moment, we must walk in that cleansing perfection and from glory unto glory Walking until the faith, perfect right? day. Walk mm -hmm. by faith. Mm -hmm. And so we need to continue uh, moving in that direction. Brother Wagner said that the Sabbath was the sign of and the seal mm -hmm. of justification by faith. Now, all my life, I've heard about the seven-day Sabbath in Revelation seminars, and it has always been that this is the day that I must uh, do such and such right. because Sunday is not the day that God ordained for me to do such and such. Right. And so all my life, you know, Sabbath after Sabbath, I'm doing such and such, seeking salvation, lost all the while. Have mercy. 
But this message brings to me a better sa a <laughs> Sabbath that works. Good news. And it shows me yeah. that the Lord of the Sabbath is able to create in me a clean heart, to renew within me a right spirit if I would just believe the word that he sends when he sends it. Mm -hmm. When Jesus says, now ye are clean, yeah. I have to accept what he says. Yeah. Yeah. I have to accept what he says. Now am I clean because he, sa he says it in his word. Yeah. And Brother, Brother Wagner says that in the most holy place now, Christ is seeking to make of Adventists uh, uh, creationists. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make us creationists. Mm -hmm. He wants us to believe so that the same word that says, let there be light can say, be ye holy. And the same effect is produced. Amen. 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 It Just shouldn't take, word. it shouldn't take 174 uh, years. It didn't take the sun that long. Right. You see the sun obeyed better than we did. <laughs> Have mercy. But uh, yes, in this book, Lessons on Faith, the, the chapter is entitled uh, Creation or Evolution, mm. which, mm. and it was A.T. Jones. A.T. Jones went into this and he, um, that he gave the Sabbath really some significance. Yeah, that, that chapter was really deep because as I was reading it, I'm like, my mind was just like, there was like, there was a shaking in my mind. There was a serious shaking in my mind because I'm like, how are you going to tell me I'm an evolutionist? I don't believe in evolution. I deny all those people. You know, um. What's the guy's name? Uh, Charles Darwin. Mm -hmm. He was a student of the devil. A student. And that volume of pure nonsense that he put together, pure nonsense, inspired by the enemy of all souls. And, and so this is what I believe. But then as, I'm, as, I read that, as I read that chapter also, Creation versus Evolution, I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm an evolutionist. Yeah. Well, you were. Uh, we're, we're, we're amen, were. amen. Old things are passed away. Old things are made new. <laughs> I'm like, man, I, you know, I was thinking as an evolution, evolutionist. But then when I realized that it's, it's, it's creation and how that creation works is day by day. It, it, Jones says successive creations, successive creations. And that, and, um, yes, uh, uh, uninterrupted victories over sin, sister wife says in, in Zive Ages. And so I really like that, that, that point because, you know, I have to think about it every single day as God created me a clean heart, create in me, restore me, create in me, create in me. And as I see my sister uh, uh, Potter's hand mentioning justification plus sanctification equaling glorification, it, it's, 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 it's a continued growth, continued growth in perfection in Christ and his glory. That is his character being revealed in us day by day, especially right now, because this, the fourth angel in Revelation in chapter 18 Lightning, the third angel, it's going on right now, not later on, right, right now. So we got to get this and we got to experience this above all things. All right. I would like to mention something quick here. Mm. We have the three angel message, right? Yes. Now, the question will be, now many Adventists are focused on the work of the papacy with the president of this world to pass the law. And our eye is on the work of the papacy for Sunday law. Mm -hmm. We are so focused on that. Uh, be, be, like we spend a lot of time every day we want to know what happened, where is the Pope, what they are doing, what's the next decision. We are so much busy on these things. Yes. What we have to remember is that it's the people that are going to vote and urge this. So instead of, I think you're going to mention it, mm -hmm. but instead of con constantly because we, sh we should watch. But instead of losing our focus in that, we also need to realize what's going on in this society because the people that are gonna push for that law. Mm -hmm. But, but I, just, I just wanna mention that because right. we, we might look at like the, for example, the, uh, the, 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 the justices, like they'll say, oh, all the, I think it's most of the justices are Catholic. That, mm -hmm. doesn't, that doesn't change anything. Where the issue really lies is, how, is what's going on in the temperature of the people. What is the temperament of the people? Mm -hmm. How are the, his, their mindset? Because the people that are gonna vote and push for the legislation. Mm -hmm. But, but um, we, we just have to understand how government works and things like that. It's very important. But so yeah, go ahead, now sorry. the question will be, what God says and how we are going to overcome mm -hmm. is very clear. He said, we are going to overcome, Revelation 12, 11, only by the blood of, of the, the lamb. lamb and by the testimony. The word of the testimony. So what is the blood of the lamb? The life of so Jesus. in Leviticus 17 verse 11 11. says, the life is in, in the, blood. the blood. The life of the flesh is so in the So if blood. we have to overcome only by the blood of Jesus, meaning the victory is only by the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 10, 11, mm -hmm. that the life of Jesus must be made manifest where? In, in our, mortal. our mortal body. Yes, because that's the so body that he took on. Question here. Where should we overcome the papacy? Mm. 
Is it outside there or is it inside here? Within. Wasn't it wasn't it Martin Luther that said that he is the worst pope? The, pa the papacy that I'm afraid of is the papacy within. Martin Luther said that. So when you look at if, oh. Ephesians chapter two verse two, okay. it says that the spirit keep that the mic, is keep the mic close. okay, the spirit that is in the prince of the air, who is Satan, mm -hmm. is the same spirit in every child of disobedience. Ephesians chapter two, right? Ephesians chapter two verse two. Mm -hmm. So the life is the mind. If our mind is to constantly doing what we want, we can be keeping the Sabbath, we cannot be saved. We are going to receive the mark of the beast. If re I can read that quickly in um, yeah, I was gonna say, read Testimony to Church, volume five, five, page, uh, let me see, Testimony to Church, volume five, uh, page uh, 216. We can be keeping it's, the it's Sabbath. It's a very, and very still, important. Yeah. You still receive the mark it of the beast. Says, what are you doing, brethren? In a great work of preparation, those who are uniting with the world are receiving a worldly mold and preparing for the mark of the beast. Do you see the point? So if I know everything about the papacy, if I know everything about the Sunday law, but in my lifestyle, in my thinking, the way I handle a daily challenges, daily problem, I'm always trusting myself, trying my best. Mm -hmm. I am functioning according to the worldly principle. If I love those who love me, Luke chapter 6 from verse 32 to 35, let us know that if you love those who love you, that's how the people in the world love. Right. So you check in your life, how do you love people? Do you love your enemies? And we know in the Bible that the only way for you to love your enemy is only by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. For Stephen to be able to pray for the people who are stoning him, he must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Acts chapter 7, verse 55 says he was filled. Mm -hmm. That means he received the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Right. And that is the fullness of the life of Jesus. Why? Mm -hmm. Because First John chapter 3, verse 25, 24 says, Christ abide in us by the Holy by Spirit. By the Holy Spirit, yes. That is the reason why in Revelation chapter 7, oh. The hand for the four thousand must be sealed. Yes. And Revelation 15 let us know that they overcome the beast, the image, the mark, and the number. Because the sealing is the fullness of Christ reproduced in them. Yes. Yes. And Revelation 14, verse 1 now, they have Christ's Father written on their phone for her. What mm -hmm. I mean? They have His the same character. father, yes. the same character, mm -hmm. the same life, same everything. Life. Same life. So overcoming the beast is overcoming our sinful nature. Mm. 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 And that is only done by the way Christ lived, by the law he lived by, by surrendering the mind to God mm. so that God can keep that mind perfectly from falling. It is the law. And that is the life of Jesus that needed to be reproduced in us. So in Revelation chapter 10, verse mm. 7, say what? God will finish his mystery. Mm -hmm. So he began the mystery. Mm -hmm. and he had to finish it. Yeah. The mystery began the day you were born again. When you are born again, your name is written in the book of life in heaven. That's what Christ told the disciples. Rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Mm. But can you lose it? Yeah. If you do not grow up Absolutely. and be sealed. Sealing is not God who is sealing you. It's you who has grown enough intellectually and spiritually. Settled and in the truth. So much that you cannot, cannot be moved. Move. Yes, yes, yes. That you won't change your mind no matter what. Even if you have the, the, the knife on your throat, you can't, you know, you won't change. Yeah, right. That's right. what we need. Yeah. So it's that life of Jesus as we are growing daily, experiencing the surrendering to God in everything. Mm -hmm. How we grow with that mm -hmm. same mind. That I won't do my will, but God will. Not my will, but God will. And you're going to grow like that. Mm -hmm. If read talk about Enoch, it's that Enoch was growing away from his own way into God's ways. Mm -hmm. So the victory is not how much we know about what's going to happen. The victory is, what is the life you have in you? Amen. Yeah. In the life of Jesus yeah. Christ. It the same thing happened to Stephen. Same thing happened to Job. It's the only way for us to overcome the papers. You know? Because we are so focused on the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. Let me read something quick here again. Mm -hmm. In the same testament chapter volume five. It says, Not but not one of us. No one, sorry, mm -hmm. no one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our character have one spot hmm. or stain upon them. 
is left unto us to remedy the defect in our character, to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement, then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciple on the day of atonement. The question is, can you cleanse yourself? No, but no. Jesus can't. that means you surrender the mind to who? To him. The man in the most holy place. And we are going place. to see how do we surrender that mind to Christ. Mm -hmm. He tell us how to do it. Mm -hmm. but before we go there, look at this. The those who know the truth, in the same chapter um, 2.13. Of where again? Testament to Church, Volume 5. Okay. We are Page 2.13. 2.13 now. Okay. So not all who profess to keep the Sabbath will be sealed. But we all saying that the Sabbath is the seal of God. How come you are keeping the Sabbath, you will not be sealed? Hmm. That means you are keeping the day, but you are not keeping the principle of Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So we are many, we are, we are salary keepers. Mm -hmm. We are not Sabbath keepers. I, I was just going to say, A.T. Jones, he mm -hmm. makes the point that there are three kinds of people in this world. Mm -hmm. There are Sunday keepers, mm -hmm. there are Saturday keepers, mm -hmm. and there are Sabbath keepers. Mm -hmm. Which one are you? He always brings you to that place so you where you got you have to make a choice. Yeah, you, you have to make you have to admit you have to confess that you, something. You need to really understand what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where do you stand? Okay. What is your condition? What is your position? Like where are you? Now it's continue saying mm -hmm. this. There are many even among those who teach the truth to others who will not receive the seal of God in their forehead. Whoa, you're not teaching any error. Let's continue to say this. It said, they had the light of truth. Yeah. They knew their master's will. They understood every point of our faith. How many points? Every point. That, so the mark of the beast, the, the sun, everything, the sanctuary, the character perfection. Oh, they know oh. everything and they teach these things to people. But themselves will not be sealed. Why? They haven't. Uh, oh. It says, by every point of our, of our faith, but they had not corresponding works. Have mercy. And the corresponding work is the life of Jesus doing the work because it says he came to do the work of the Father. He, he have a works for us to do. What is the work for us to do? It's allowing him to work in us mightily. Colossians mm -hmm. 1, 29. So how do we surrender the mind to God? And how are we cleansed? If you read um, Council on Health, page 222, I would like you to read that for us, please. Mm -hmm. To understand how really the 1888 come to your daily practical life. Pastor Goku, right before I read that, can I just read this right over go here? Ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> this is Mount of Blessings because you, 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 you're dropping so many gems on the brothers and sisters. You, you, it's you, all right, it's all right. It's, it's, it's flooding, it's flowing, but, but I, 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 I don't want them to, 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 to miss this it's one okay. over here. Go ahead, go ahead. It is Mount of Blessings, page 25, and paragraph 2. It's right in the beginning. It says, only like can appreciate like. Mount of Blessings, page 25, paragraph 2. Mm -hmm. Only like can appreciate like. Unless you accept in your own life the principle of self-sacrificing love, which is the principle of his character, you cannot know God. And so when you're talking about Stephen, I love to hear about Stephen because Stephen learned to know God. He appreciated the character of God. He liked God and he loved him too. He liked God's character and he loved it too. We know he loved it because it was demonstrated in him. So Stephen was then filled with the Holy Spirit in order to be able to face persecution. So before persecution comes our way, we're going to need the latter rain in order to be able to face the time of Jacob's trouble such as never was. So it's the same typology in the life of Stephen. He grew with God. He knew the word, obviously. He was preaching in the book of Acts, I believe it's chapter 7. And then he was filled with the Holy Spirit to be able to face the persecution and, and, and glorify God in his persecution, isn't Paul that says that, that I glory in my infirmities. So in his persecution, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He, 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 he was having the Christian experience. Why? Because, be, be, because he appreciated, he liked, and he loved God. And that connects with, with um, Councils on Health, right? Mm -hmm. um, Council on Health, page 222. Uh, 222, I believe it's paragraph 2, right? Uh, 
Oh, you got it? It's, it seem, right. No, I just wanted to make a point here. Oh, no it, seem, it seems like what we're saying, and I would agree. I do agree. I do agree. Amen. It seems like what we're saying here is that there is a certain efficiency that comes with the experience. Yeah. When the gospel becomes practical, it becomes attractive, and it actually accomplishes the work that God sent it for. But as long as it's just theory, it can do nothing, mm -hmm. right? And so in uh, First Selected Messages, page 234, 234, paragraph 6, the prophet said this. She says, speaking of the 1888 message, an unwillingness to yield up preconceived opinions and to accept this truth lay at the foundation of a large share of the opposition manifested at Minneapolis against the Lord's message through brothers, uh, brethren E.J. Wagner and A.T. Jones. Listen to this. She says, by exciting that opposition, Satan succeeded. So the rejection of 1880 was the work of Satan behind the whole... No, 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 no. The success. The success of his work. She says, she says, by exciting that opposition, Satan succeeded. succeeded. 1888 is years after 1844. So Christ is in the most holy place at this time. Yeah. Satan succeeded. We have a problem here. Big. She says, Satan succeeded in shutting away from our people in a great measure the special power of the Holy Spirit that God longed to impart to them. She says the enemy prevented them from obtaining that efficiency. efficiency. We were just talking about how the efficiency comes from the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Michael, you read earlier that the message that Jones and Wagner brought invited the people to receive the righteousness of Christ, which is made, which is made manifest, manifest in obedience to, to all, all the, commandments the commandments of God. God. That is the efficiency right yeah. there. She says the enemy prevented them from obtaining that efficiency, which might have been theirs in carrying the truth to the world as the apostles proclaimed it after the day of Pentecost. And in the book of Romans chapter one and verse 15, just coupling the, the efficiency with the experience like mm -hmm. you were speaking about, the apostle Paul said this, he says, so as much as in me is, I am ready. Hmm. The Apostle Paul says that until this thing is in us, we're not ready. He says, as much as in me is, I am ready. That's efficiency. Yes. yes. The 1888 right. message brought us that efficiency in that we were invited to partake Amen. Amen. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. He says, so as much as in me is, hmm. I am ready to the preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. The Apostle Paul was a recipient of that power, yeah. and it was in him, yeah. and it was demonstrated by him, yeah. and because that was so, he was ready to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now, God has given to Seventh-day Adventists a very special work during his Day of Atonement. Yeah. We are to preach the gospel to every kindred, nation, tribe, and people on this, everybody. Yeah. We can't do so with less power than the Apostle Paul had. The 1888 message was to bring us the, the light of the fourth angel. Mm -hmm. I, I'm reminded of um, in the book of Daniel, Gabriel was trying to get a message through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it took Michael standing up to do something yes. to get that message through. And the fourth angel, we see that Christ came and assisted us in mm -hmm. 1888. Mm -hmm. He really wanted us to finish the work. Mm -hmm. He really wanted to come back and claim a people. The message was designed not to prepare us to die, mm -mm. but to prepare us for translation and the vindication of God's character. Amen. All of these things were in that message. Yeah. Yeah, but we yeah. find Satan's success that, that, back there. I was going to tell you to go in back to talk about that a little bit more. We can't, we you, you can't let that, okay. you cannot let that slide. Okay. Satan can, succeeded. Jesus in the most holy place. You tell me, Satan succeeded, Pastor Google? That is, uh, is because we don't understand something. It's a very serious because problem. She's a fourth angel. I know many people are. It sounds very strange to them. Let me read Sister White for you okay. a little bit. You want to slow down on that? Okay. This is um, early writing, page okay. two seventy-seven. I'm going to press on that point again. He yeah, said, no. I saw angels hurrying to and fro in heaven, descending to earth and again ascending to heaven, preparing for the fulfillment of some important event. Yes. Then I saw another mighty angel, permission to descend to earth, yes. to unite his voice with the, with the third angel. Three plus Whoa. one. Three plus one is four. Let, let the full cavalry. He come to unite his voice to the third one. Mm -hmm. With the third one. We continue. And give power and force to his message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So this is the fourth angel we don't talk about. We don't need to third angel. Let me say third angel. God said, no, he can't finish the work. There's another one need to come down great to, mm-hmm. with great power yes. to you know what? His power, his force, and his strength, and everything. Mm-hmm. Let's continue. Great power and glory were imparted to the angel, and as he descended, the earth was lightened with his glory. That Revelation 18, verse 1. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> The light which attend this angel penetrate everywhere mm. as the cry as he cried mightily with a strong voice, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, is become the habitation of uh, devils. That you will see in Revelation 18, from verse 2 to verse 4, he repeats yes. the second angel message about Babylon. Mm-hmm. So for us to overcome the mark of the beast, we need a lightning. Mm-hmm. Because according to Great Controversy, page 569, paragraph 1 and 2, Satan, he brought, he brought the misapprehension of God's law. Mm-hmm. And that darkened the whole earth. Now, the Catholic Church did the same thing. That's what we call dark ages. Yeah. Everyone was in darkness. No knowledge. Mm-hmm. So the light needs to come to dispel the darkness. Now, the most important thing I really want us to see here is why are we only focused on three angel message? But God is saying the fourth is the one that will come to empower, to help, to support, to bring light, to help the third angel to finish the work. That's why the, th- the fourth angel message is the loud cry mm, of the, third, of the angel. third angel. It's not mm. a different message. Mm. It just brought it about to the, to, to the culmination. Right. So 1888, Mm. That was the message mm. of the fourth angel. Yeah. And Sister White said that over of the fourth angel. And, and later on, she again. says she didn't say the fourth angel, but she said what? righteous okay. by faith. In the message of eighteen eight is the third angel message mm. in verity. In verity. verity. What does it mean of verity? Mm-hmm. That mean verity, it, it, truth. In, it in, mean in like fact. in it, it, in it, 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 it whole meaning. Yes. yes. That mean you can't have better than that. Mm-hmm. That's the fourth angel coming. Mm-hmm. And then who succeeded? Satan succeeded through the leaders to turn away the message from us. Through the leading brethren, she said, right? Yeah. Through the lead- she didn't say through the papacy. That, you know, because when I saw that statement, I'm like, wait a minute. She, be, she, you know, she was very specific. Okay, what's his papacy then? She said, she said she, mm-hmm. no, when, uh, by the way, when I'm saying through the papacy, I'm saying it through the understanding, through the lens it is that we all, that we we all, all typically, look, at. typically look at. It does not say that, that we were overcome by the evangelical church. Mm-hmm. That, that doesn't mean that there isn't any influence of the evangelical church, unfortunately, on, 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 on this movement. But, 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 but she said that through our leading brethren. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish the quotation. Yeah, right yeah, please, please, please. Okay. I, she you says, gotta get it right. She says, by exciting that opposition, Satan succeeded in shutting away from our people in a great measure the special power of the Holy Spirit that God longed to impart to them. The enemy prevented them from obtaining that efficiency. Mm. The enemy prevented them from obtaining that efficiency. If we did not obtain the efficiency, then our work is inefficient. Right. She says the enemy prevented them from obtaining that efficiency, which might have been theirs, in carrying the truth to the world. And as the, as the apostles proclaimed it after the day of Pentecost, the light that is to lighten the whole earth with its glory was resisted, and by the action of our own brethren, has been in a large, a great degree, kept away from the world. Wait a minute. The, Wait a minute. So are you saying to me, I, I, I didn't say it. Okay, I didn't okay. say it. <laughs> the third angel had to be assisted by the fourth to finish the work. Mm-hmm. That means that is the only hope the church has. Like we, we are the people of the three angel message because we read the Testament to Church, Volume 5, page 455, paragraph 2, say the first, the second, third angel are the people. Mm-hmm. We yeah. are the angel. Now, and we have a message to live by and to preach. Mm. And God is saying, that message you have is good. But it's not enough. You need power and light. Mm. I'm going to send you a message that's going to light up everything. Mm. And then supply power because you're going to face persecution. Mm-hmm. And then we resist that message. And we get locked up now 
in a very stagnant condition, yeah. in a high dose of laudation condition. Let me say this, let me say this. So can we see here first before we move, mm. that the only hope for the church now is to go back to the message that we have rejected. That's what I want to say. Okay. It's the yeah. only hope we have. We, we, there is no other way around it's, it's like, it. Is, it is, sometimes when I read this, thing, I just shake inside mm. myself. Like, mm. wow. I was, was going to say that. When, when, we, when we read that... Oh, did, yeah. Okay, this mic. When we read that Satan succeeded back there in 1888 because we resisted this message, that we resisted our efficiency to finish the work and all of these things, then this brings me to the point, Brother Mike, you said a moment ago that in the most holy place, the, the message of 1888 forced you to see that you at one point were an evolutionist, but you must now be a creationist, right? right? It brings you to that point. This thing helps me to see that Satan's success in our lives is right there with whatever we do with that message. When this message comes to us, mm. the justification by faith through Jesus Christ, the righteousness of Christ, the message of 1888, when we're faced with this thing, and the time is now here to, to, to study it, to, to, to review it, to look at, to, what exactly were these brethren talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we have opportunities like we do even right now, mm -hmm. um, beloved, what we do with this is where we find the success or the defeat of Satan. It's right there. Right, right. The defeat of Satan is not somewhere far off in the future. Good point. Just like his success is not somewhere far off in the future. It's back there in 1888. Mm. This message, I like how earlier you guys spoke about how this message wasn't, it wasn't just a bunch of doctrine. It brought a person. Yeah. Yeah. It brought Christ near to us. In life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It brought Christ near to us, even as it did for Paul on the road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. It brought Christ near to us. And, and the way that we treat the Savior, the way that we treat the messengers, the, the, the emphasis and the importance that we put on this Sabbath after Sabbath tells us whether or not Satan is succeeding in our pulpits today. Have mercy. And yeah. so we can be gathering Sabbath. It's, it's very serious. We can be gathering Sabbath after Sabbath prayer meeting after prayer meeting, week of prayers, and all of these things, and talk about wonderful doctrines. So long as the message that was there in 1888, Christ and his righteousness, is absent, Satan is succeeding through our weeks of prayer. Mm -hmm. He is succeeding through our, our, our Sabbath schools. He succeeded. His success is right there in how we treat this message. Yes, sir. And it's, I want to show just one more quotation yeah, because yeah, I feel right, very yeah. strongly about this no, point. I feel you. I, I feel, I'm right there with listen, you. Listen, when the Bible says that we are dealing with, with Satan and he, he, he is... Uh, he is um, he was wroth with the, the remnant of us. He went yeah, to make war. Yeah. This is serious. Yeah, it's, it's, a real, it's a real warfare that's going on, and we can't uh, pretend that it's not affecting us. In, in, early, uh, in Education, page 190, it says that in, in, every, uh, in every choice that we make, we are choosing on which side of the controversy yeah. that, we're gonna, that we're standing. Like, there's, there, there's no middle... See, these are like, you know, things that we say all the time. There's no middle ground. You can't, you, 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 you can't be a part-time Christian. Mm. No, no. No, there is no middle ground. No. You cannot be a part-time. It doesn't work that way. It never has, and it cannot work that way. No. That's why you are to choose ye this day whom you will stand, on which side of the controversy you're going to stand. Are you going to just listen to this and then just, oh, yeah, 1888. It's, 1888 is not just a date that happened in the past. 1888 is, is the great disappointment. It is the success of Christ in this great controversy if we go back. And if, if we go back. But what, but what happened no, back there? The great disappointment. Wait, 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 the great not disappointment. if we go back. You say it's the only hope that we must go. Yeah, we must. We must go back. Okay, finish to read that first. The, 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 this point about about mm. um, us being at war with Satan, we know that in these last days, Pastor Koku mentioned, and it's true, that as Adventists we have a lot of heavy emphasis on the man of sin and what he's doing, and the uh, inspiration does tell us that we're to expose the man of sin. That is a yeah. part of our job. So we're not saying that you know. We should not. We should not, or understanding what Pope Francis is doing at this moment is not significant in prophecy or whatever the case is. We just want a better focus. Yeah. We want a better focus. And this is what um, Sister White said in Great Controversy, page 572. Speaking of the papacy, she said, the papacy is well adapted to meet the wants of all these. Mm -hmm. She says, it is prepared for two classes of mankind embracing nearly the whole world. So. Inspiration says that the papacy, the man of sin, the Roman Catholic Church, they're ready for two classes of people. They are only ready for two classes of people. I wonder if there's a class of people they're not ready for. Oh. They are ready for two classes of people mm -hmm. uh, of mankind embracing nearly the whole world. She says this, these are the two classes. Those who would be saved by their merits, that's salvation by works, right. and those who would be saved in their sins. 
covered by the grace. Yeah. We are so covered by that, the that's grace. That's that false grace. Yeah, 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 that false grace. False but then she, says, then she says, here is the secret of its power. The secret of the papacy's power is in the fact that humanity is divided into clear two classes, those who believe that they can be saved in their own works, those who believe that they can be saved in their sins, and the only solution, the only remedy to that issue is the message that came in 1888. It is the message wow. of justification by faith, mm -hmm. receiving the righteousness of Christ, which is made manifest in obedience to Whoa, all the commandments, the commandments of, God. of God. That message leaves us with a powerless papacy, and we're playing with this message hmm. as though it's just another date. Yeah. As though it's just some other thing that happened in our history. No, it is the success of this church. Yeah. Yes. We, yes. We are we are currently in a state of Adventist stagnancy yeah, forgot, because mm -hmm. mm. we're in a state of Adventist stagnancy. We're not moving forward into the most holy place. We're in stagnancy because the message designed to give us the experience that Christ desires mm. for us to have in the Day of Atonement was right there. But that is where we find Satan's success. Mm. And it's right that there that Christ must get the victory. victory yeah. Right there. So we must so, go back there. So look at this. Look at it. He said, the angel, I'm still reading in uh, early writing, page uh, 27, paragraph, mm -hmm. four, paragraph 1. He said, the work of this angel, the fourth angel, mm -hmm. come at the right time, right on time to join in the last great work of the third angel message, mm -hmm. and it, it swells to a loud cry. Yes. So mm -hmm. that means you cannot finish the work without the fourth angel. Impossible. You just cannot. It's this impossible. is not possible. Now, guess what? Why are we so divided? This is a conference there, uh, 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 the supporting ministry over there. D different groups. There is different groups. Uh, uh, all over. Now, look at this. It's, and the people of God are thus prepared to stand in the hour of temptation. What is the hour of temptation? The time of great trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we're going to be facing all these steps of the Sunday we law. The mm -hmm. You come mm -hmm. first, then you come, you come by, you can say, then you come to the level of Death decree. Yeah, gonna die. So the only way for us to face the time of temptation, we need this fourth angel. Yeah. Now the next thing is this. Which, uh, which they are soon to meet. Mm -hmm. I saw a great light resting upon them. That's the light of the fourth angel. Mm. And they unite to fearlessly proclaim the third angel mm -hmm. message. And that light is the life of Jesus in us. Amen. Amen. And it's a, it's, my point is this. They unite in a fearless, they unite to fearlessly proclaim the third angel message. My point is they, they are united. Yeah, yeah. So this is the message that is going to unite the conference, mm -hmm. the present truth, the independent, everyone that we are preaching, one message, hmm. have one purpose, one life, one experience, Look at the disciple before the Pentecost. Right. They was always bullying each other. Mm -hmm. But when they understood that it, uh, it's about life. And Christ said that you will have my life abundantly. Finally, when they get in the upper room, they was bullying. No, everybody looking for what? The life. Yes. And that life, life comes by Christ. what? The Holy Spirit. That's right. All the division stuff. One accord come in. It is the same thing that up the, the mercy of the fourth angel will do to the whole Adventist, Adventist body. And mm -hmm. it will do it. And it will do it. Mm -hmm. My brother and my sister, with you or without you, God has finished the work. If you look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. No, no, Hebrew. Hebrew, sorry. Hebrew chapter 4. Are you having a good right here? I think so. Where, where you looking for? Four, it must be verse three. Look at it. Hebrews chapter four, verse three. For we which have believed do mm -hmm. enter mm -hmm. into okay. rest. Mm -hmm. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, mm -hmm. although the work were finished from the foundation of the world. Their work to save us. Mm -hmm was finished way before. Mm -hmm. So God is letting you know, listen, I get this thing done. Mm -hmm. It was Revelation 13, 8. Lamb was slain from the foundation of the, All right. of the world. And it's First Peter chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 18 to 20, mm -hmm. that the final salvation was set up before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. So now we are getting into something that was already done. Mm -hmm. it's because I mean, yeah, God, yeah. God yeah. foresaw, <laughs> he was saying in Revelation 15, that I have the people who are yeah. going to overcome the beast, yeah. the image, the mark, and the number. And how are they going to get it? 
by the fourth angel. Amen. Amen. And who is the fourth angel? You are the fourth angel. We were born at the, the right time. People, you are the angel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with a message. Yeah, yeah. And that message needs to be attended by what? By power. Our Question here. Of the Holy Spirit. Question here. Mm -hmm. Mike. Imagine you don't know the message. What are you receive the power to do for? Imagine you know the message you don't believe. What are you going to receive the power to use it for? Mm. The disciple to receive the Holy Spirit on that day, the power is coming to empower them to preach a message. Yeah, right, right. Mm. Yes, mm. Yes, yes, Christ yes, said, yes. go and wait for me. You mm. know the message, but wait. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 because you need a power. Mm -hmm. Because when you go into preaching, the devil is going to be doing things, going to get people sick. Some people got beat up naked. And when they get people sick, please heal these people for me. If the devil kill, keeps kill somebody, raise that person up for me. Yeah. And guess what? <laughs> when you look very <laughs> well yeah. in testimony to church, no, no, testimony to ministers, page 507, paragraph 1. Mm. You say we are going to experience a greater experience than the Pentecost. Yeah. I mean, it have, we have to reach the point where we have one doctrine, mm -hmm. one experience, mm -hmm. one faith, one, baptism, one Savior, one, one baptism, on one Holy Spirit yes, to go forward mm -hmm. attended by the one power of God to finish the work. This division we are having now is a revelation that we are wrong somewhere. Exactly. Look at this. The disciples know the message. They know the truth, but they still be divided. Why? They don't have the power to live the life of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know mm -hmm. the message, but mm -hmm. guess what? We fighting each other on the social media. We cursing. We saying whatever we want. And the Sabbath morning, everybody's clean, 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 well dressed to worship God. But we can sometimes we can't talk to each other. It's very important for us to know we don't have no other hope. Mm. If we want to finish the work, if we want to vindicate God's character, if we want to be united, if we want really to allow God to fulfill in our life mm. what He has already done, yeah. finish. Yeah. For the we, 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 we're going to take some, some, of our, some of our closing points because we do have yes, to wind yeah, down, but, yeah, yeah. But, but, but do not let this slow you down. Save, I, just, yeah. I just want to share this quotation to yeah. echo his thought. Mm -hmm. um, this is from the 1888 Materials, page 765 in paragraph 6. Mm -hmm. We're told the end is near. We have not a moment to lose. Light is to shine forth from God's people in clear, distinct rays, yes. bringing Jesus yes. before the churches and before the world. She says, and every ray of light received is to be communicated to others. One interest mm -hmm. will prevail. Yes, sir. Read that. She says, one <laughs> subject yes. will swallow yes. up <laughs> every other subject. Oh, yes. Christ, oh, our, our righteousness. righteousness. Meaning, his life yes. will produce in us Amen. by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That message that came in 1888. Is, 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 is it came right on time. Yes. And I believe, again, in this generation, it is right on time. And yes. it is going to accomplish the work that God sent it to do. She says this message is going to swallow up every other message. Every it's going to swallow up every other subject. Yes. So it's impossible for you to, for, for you to read. Let me rephrase that, because it is possible. Mm. It is impossible for you to believe in inspiration. Mm. And to read that, and to, and to think that we need to just put this thing on the back burner. Put, put Jones and Wagner, back burner. 1888, back burner. Don't focus too much on that. No. Christ and his righteousness. We need to focus on, on, on this. So you're telling me Th that's why we hear so little about 1880 in our churches. I'm telling you oh, that, that. That's why we don't even know about it. Uh -huh. Many of us, we don't even know about it. And the worst that, of that is. That, that's, Satan's, that's the result of Satan's success. That is Satan's success, right? There. A, it, it is still lingering on. It, and until. And until we are, because this is the this is the message that will heal the church of the Laodicean lukewarmness. Yes. See, I don't have time. I don't have yes. time. We don't, we don't have time to get into this thing. Yes. But, but 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 this is when so in eighteen wow. from 1844 to the fifties to the fifties and fifty particularly specifically fifty nine. Mm -hmm. That's when Laodicean lukewarmness was full blown. That's when it crept in. Eighteen fifty six was where just what was like okay this is really coming on fifty nine. Mm -hmm. that, that's it. So to heal us of that condition. The same way God wanted to fix the dark ages, he sent justification by faith through Martin Luther to fix us. He sent us the same message, but with added power, coupled with the Wait cleansing of it. It was, it was, it was perfect. It was right. It's God's idea. This Divinely was a man's calculated. idea. Divinely calculated. Yes, on time to, the, to heal the church of the later scene, the lukewarmness of their dryness, of, because they were arguing a lot and debating with, and, and winning in, the deba in their debate, by the way, yeah. of doctrine and things like that. But God was like, I don't need you to win. In the, I need you to win in your heart, not in your arguments with other brothers and sisters. The war that was in heaven, it was not, you know, fists and things like that. It was, it was, it was a great argument, but, but more than just words and things like that, it was a demonstration of one life. 
Mm -hmm. versus a life of another. Mm -hmm. The righteousness of God versus mm -hmm. the version of righteousness that Satan has. So when you're talking about the righteousness of Christ, Pastor Koku, mm -hmm. wait, that, that, that's not, brothers and sisters, that, it's not any kind of righteousness. It is not just obedience. It is, it is the obedience of Christ under the worst circumstances. Mm -hmm. It is the obedience of Christ while he was cumbered. Oh, uh, it, he was covered with our bad habits, with our bad equipment, with our weaknesses, even in that situation. Mm -hmm. He made the flesh behave. That is the righteousness that we're talking about. And that's why it works. That, that, that is the righteousness. It was tested. You, 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 you know, you put some pressure on something, you know what I'm saying? You want to test to make sure it's solid. Yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in a crisis, character is revealed. Yes, so, sir. So, so that yes, means you're telling me yes, sir. the whole Sunday law, all of these mm -hmm. things. Yes. Is to press the people of God so much <laughs> that the love of God, the mm -hmm. selflessness of God, is right. that is the life of Jesus, mm. will be fully manifest because greater is the pressure, greater is the test, glorious is the victory. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you know what Gethsemane means? Gethsemane <clears throat> means oil press. Mm -hmm. and so, so, so with the olive, with the olive, with the olive, mm -hmm. if you want to get more oil out of the olive, you know what you got to do? Mm -hmm. You, you got to press. Press it more. This is coming. This is coming a time where we're going to be in a Gethsemane experience, and we're going to be pressed in so, every drip of so oil. So this go very Must far, very far to the point where God going to have a people mm -hmm. between the time Christ finished and mm -hmm. stopped the work of mediation. Yes, yes. Between that time when He's going to change from He his, took his, off His, his robe of robe. a high priest. Right to put on the robe of a king Judge. and the crown of king mm -hmm. to come back to earth. Mm -hmm. So between that time he finished to the time he will appear in the sky, mm -hmm. you're going to have the 144 people mm -hmm. who come out as the finished product mm -hmm. of that message, mm -hmm. of that work, mm -hmm. and they will stand yes. under all the pressure, yes, under the persecution, under everything, yes. and they will not sin. Not only that, yes. they will exhibit the fullness of God's love, his lovely yes. character, yes. and not only that, now they are living all of this without Medeira. Mm. It's going to be the first and the last time it's ever happened mm. to a human being. My and they're going to be the coronation yeah. of the work of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. So, and guess what? They're going to be used yes. by God yes. in the executive judgment. Yes. Yes. In the executive judgment, after the millennium when we come back, now, let's say, let's say somebody you know very well in the faith is lost. And then you're like, God, how this man can be lost? And you play back everything. Mm. Panoramic view. Wow. Then, Satan have to confess that God is right. So mm. how are God going to do it? God will show them the 144,000. Mm -hmm. So between a time that there's no mediator, Living the these people, I submit them to your test. Mm, mm, mm. To your test, to test them. Mm, mm. He, that means your test proves <laughs> your test, test proved that they are right. And by doing so, you condemn yourself because if a sinful human being can by God's power mm. reach that point, yes. and you who is was a holy angel, you choose sin, you know you condemn yourself. Yeah, yeah. Overwhelming. And Over the same judgment, the same judgment will apply to all human beings. Mm. If the hundredfold fall can make it because of the Provision was made for all mankind. Mm. If they accept it and experience it, what is your reason? Mm. Then Satan, the fallen angels, the, the lost huma humanity, everyone will say, the Lord, you are good and you are right in all your dealings. Yes, yes. And God will pronounce the last judgment. Yes. And they were going to be burned, consumed, and they will return to non-existence. And the new earth, will be established. Mm, mm. So this message is more than just saving people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a message oh, yeah. to glorify God, to vindicate God, and bring the judgment yes, yes, yes. clearly. Yes. It is such a great thing. And I don't know. I, mean, I would suggest that we listen to a video of um, Pastor Robert Whelan. Robert Whelan, yes. Where he proved the whole history, and he shown how, by a very deceptive way, the general conference change the meaning of the message mm. and publish some of the book and put it in the hand of pastors. So not only they receive the message, now they go ahead and falsify the message. They give, they my give, brother they give a, and a my sister, a, a different version. this is about your eternal life. We are not here to be against people. We want you to be very, very aware. You might talk 
to some pastor, they will tell, oh, we accept the message. They might give you some book to read. Make sure it's the right version. Because it's a fake version of the message. Pastor Gogu, so that's it's why a we say, serious stuff. That's why we want to share with them the books. All that, right. That we're actually, so the, show the, the books again, actually, and then we will see the, how we run it out. And then we can give our closing thoughts. Definitely. We can give our closing thoughts. So I, I already pointed out the 1895 sermons by A.T. Jones. Must read, particularly sermon number 11 to sermon number 26, which is the last one. The beginning sermons are very good to read, too in regards to religious liberty, which is a great part of uh, the third angel's message, which, uh, which these are things we're all gonna, we're gonna, be, we're, we're gonna go through, but definitely this book here, uh, 1893 sermons as well. Jones, what, this was a latter rain material mm. stuff that he's talking about here, yeah. latter rain stuff, because a few years before Sister White was talking about how this was a latter rain message that we had resisted. Mm -hmm. And then after that, 1893 came around and then Jones went through that again with the people. He talked about the grace of God, the Laodicean message, etc. These sermons, extra powerful. Um, and then we, th there's a lot more. We didn't even talk about, let, let me just pull the other one. Let me pull the other one. There's Glad Tidings by E.J. Wagner. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the covenants, righteousness by faith and the covenants. When you study the covenants and righteousness by faith, you're going to think to yourself, there's no other way to understand the plan of salvation than through the covenants. And we didn't even touch on it yet. That's mm -hmm. just to show you the depth of, of, of the mind of God and everything he went through to be able to get us to understand this message. He teaches it in the sanctuary. He teaches it through the covenants. He teaches it through so many different things. And when you spend time in each of those areas, you're going to think that this is the only way that somebody can understand it. But God, understanding how humanity is, he has to give different pictures from different angles. So with the covenants, Glad Tidings by E.J. Wagner is excellent. I have to be honest, the first couple of chapters are kind of like, eh, but, but, but it gets really sweet. Um, and... Um, there's the everlasting, the everlasting Covenant, the Everlasting Covenant by E.J. Wagner, a thicker book which goes through more detail of, of the covenant, a very good read for those who really want to get more into the details of it. You, you don't want to deny this, the Everlasting Covenant. And um, Christ and his righteousness. I remember when uh, Paul and I, when we did the conversations uh, with Christ, the conversations on Christ, the faithful and true, uh, not the faithful and true witness, uh, Christ and our righteousness. And we quoted, um, we quoted this book. We quoted the first sentence in this book, actually. And I'll, I'll just read it again. It says, in the, first three verse, in the first verse of the third chapter of Hebrews, we have an exhortation which comprehends the injunctions given to the Christian. It is this, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. To do this, to consider Christ, to do this as the Bible enjoins, to consider Christ continually and intelligently, just as he is, will transform one into a perfect Christian. For by beholding, we become changed. This book right here is a rich little book. I mean, the, 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 the stuff in this is, is, just, is just powerful. He goes through Christ as, as being divine, Christ as man. And wonderful book. Same thing with Consecrated Way to Christian Perfection by A.T. Jones. Now, if you go into our 2016 School of the Prophets, if you go in the description box of the video, there's a, there's a link of the 2016 School of the Prophets, there's a link, and you'll find the books in there as a PDF. So you can go there, you'll get the study notes for the messages, as well as the PDF of those books. And now, so those were by Jones and Wagner. And Paul, you also brought up Lessons on Faith as well. That's a good starter. That's a good beginner book, um, I would say, the book Lessons on Faith, um, in regards to how to cult the importance of cultivating faith. He it makes it very quotes practical. Away on that. It's, it's very, very practical. So practical, so basic and, and transformative, really. At least it was for me. So you can show the faith. Oh, oh that cover, yeah. Lessons on faith. And then there is uh, the 1888 Message and Introduction by Robert Wheeland. I like this book because he quotes Jones and Wagner a lot and Sister White as well. So the way that he does it is that he goes through points of the message, important points. He shows how Jones and Wagner were explaining it, and then he, he'll pose it in a question, did the spirit of prophecy agree with this? And then he would show whether or not the spirit of prophecy agreed with it. Mm -hmm. And then he would say, does the Bible agree with it? Mm -hmm. Because you say, Pastor Gogu, you say some people are allergic to the spirit of prophecy. Yeah, some people are very allergic <laughs> to that. So, so he would go through, through the Bible, mm -hmm. and so does the Bible agree with it? And he would make it so plain. And I love how Wagner says it, and I, and I like to take in the way that they say things. I like to apply it myself when I share things. And Wagner will say things like, like, somebody asked Wagner, because he was talking about the nature of Christ, he said, what about that text in the Bible where it says 
that, that, that holy thing that is in your belly, speaking about Mary, to try to insinuate that Christ didn't take on our, our sinful nature. And Wagner said, I don't know anything about this matter <laughs> other than what the Bible says. <laughs> I'm like, ah, the humility that, that this message causes you to have, it makes you realize, I don't know anything. There's much more to know except for what I've read in the Word of God. So, so this is a really good book that goes through those points that I highly recommend for everybody uh, to really read and to really go through. This is the book that we're reading and we're studying month after month, and we're going to continue making videos going through it so that we can get the details. And that's what our Sabbath school for the year, by the way. Yeah, yeah, we, we read this during the time where we do our year, morning whole studies. The year we're going to be kicking on 1888. Yeah. Even the School of Prophet will be on 1888. Oh, yes. Like, oh, yes. everything oh, yes. is like 1888. Let me, let me, let, I'm just going to read this, and then you can share your final thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, uh, Councils on Health, page 222, that you wanted to read. I'll just read that as my closing thought. And it says this. It says, The Godhead was stirred with pity for the race. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. gave themselves mm -hmm. to the working out of the plan of redemption. In order fully to carry out this plan, it was decided that Christ, the only begotten Son of God, should give himself an offering for sin. What line can measure the depth of this love? God would make it impossible for man to say that he could have done more. With Christ, he gave all the resources of heaven that nothing might be wanting in the plan for man's uplifting. Here is love, the contemplation of which should fill the soul with inexpressible gratitude. Oh, what love, what matchless love. The contemplation of this love, the contemplation of this love will cleanse the soul from all selfishness. It will lead the disciple to deny self, take up the cross, and follow the Redeemer. That is Council on Health, page 222, paragraph 2. The contemplation of this love is what will cleanse the soul from all selfishness. Right now is the time for this message. Right, time, right now is where Christ is in the most holy place doing the work of cleansing the most holy place. Mm -hmm. And so if it is left with us to cleanse all the defects in our character, how do we get it done? We contemplate this love. We contemplate Christ just as he is. And if we behold him intelligently and continually, we will be changed into perfect Christians because it is by beholding that we are changed. So, and I can just go on with the same train of thought. How do we then behold his love? Mm. It's by counting his goodness, things he has done for us in the past. And I would like to say here, God decided your birth. Read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. He said, Before you were formed in your mother's belly, I knew, I knew, I knew you thee. by your name. Oh my goodness, come on. That means God was commending everything. Now, the next thing is, He chose your birth. Okay, you are in trouble of sin. Christ chose to die for you. All of this thing you don't know. It's not part of your decision. That means it is God who is doing everything for you, taking the initiative. So Everything. Closing point. I just have to so say all word. the past, that is just, this is a great thing I'm talking about. Now let's talk about how much he protects you in the past. How he spare your life from accident. How he give you a degree. How he give you a family. Give you everything. When you start counting his goodness. Mm -hmm. And then now you can count his goodness he's doing for you. Things he's doing for you right now. You have a free 24-7 protection of the holy angel. Mm. The free intercession of Christ in the most holy place. The free guidance of the Holy Spirit. The free fellowship with the brethren in Christ. Amen. And then you also behold the things God promised to do because they are already done. Amen. He promised to make you perfect. Yes. He promised to prepare a place for you in heaven and come back to take you with himself. He promised to make you overcomer. Amen. He promised to be all the way with you. And above all of this, he promised saying, the weakest of the God people of the 144,000, the weakest will be mightier than Satan all his host. That means God is telling you, there's no way I can fall. And the good news is this. If Christ knew we are going, we are not going to make it, he would never die for us. Right. So his death is a confirmation that is going to be sure. All we need to do is 
Say, Lord, do unto me as you begin. Amen. Amen. Finish your mystery yes. in me. And your whole Christian life is no longer the church you belong to. Mm -hmm. It becomes you get in, in agreement Amen. with the things God has done Amen. just for you. Amen. He prepared a place. Yes. Now he's preparing you to be fit for that place. Fitness, yes, yes. Okay? Amen. So beholding the love of God is counting his goodness, his love. He will constantly lead you to repent. Christ, if you love me, keep my commandments. He's going to lead you to, command, to, to, to obey God. Mm. It, it, it changed life. When you come in prayer, you don't come to beg. You come to claim what is already there. Amen. It's a message that changes everything. Your understanding of church member, your understanding of religious liberty, the religious liberty, your understanding of God's character, everything mm -hmm. is just blow to the, to the magnification. Every doctrine, even the understanding of the Sabbath will be so sweet. Mm -hmm. So, Brother Paul, mm -hmm. Well, I mean, now that you've given the everlasting gospel. Amen. <laughs> you can't add to everlasting, now, can you? <laughs> I, I can only echo your thoughts, really, because, you know, th this message is, it is the success of everyone in, the, in your Day of Atonement. Yeah. It is the, the success. I'll read again in uh, the 1888 Materials, page 765, paragraph 6, where Sister White said that every ray of light received is to be communicated to others. She says one interest will prevail one subject will swallow up every other and that subject is christ our righteousness that 1888 message that came in uh the 1888 message that came in 1888 that message of christ's righteousness that came in the year 1888 yeah. is the most significant thing that we can direct our attention upon at this time it is not the man of sin though he's exposed when we look at the man of calvary yeah, exactly. clearly we need, to, we need to spend time allowing that message to do what the prophet said it would do. It doesn't matter what issues we have that divide us. If we allow this message to do what she says it will do, all of those things belong in the belly of the 1888 message. Amen. That's because right. it's going to swallow up every other subject. Oh, wow. And that message will prepare a people to stand true to God in this day of atonement. I cannot overemphasize or overstress the solemnity of what we're talking about yeah. right now. It's going to come. When you're going to start coming out, yeah. oh yeah, if by God's grace, it's going to come over. Amen. Satan succeeded only because we failed to recognize and accept what this message was in 1888. Hmm. The message is, is it's here to you tonight. It, it, it's here right now. It's here with us even yeah. at this moment. Yeah. And the question is, what are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Will Satan succeed from this moment on in our experience, or are we ready for successive victories? One after the other, Jacob's Ladder, every round goes higher, higher and, higher. and higher. This message eliminates that Christian experience where we're like a roller coaster, up and down, up and down. Success today, failure on the Sabbath, hear a great sermon and go back, uh, uh, go back to work and mm -hmm. fail some more to come back Sabbath to be blessed again. This message is preparing us for translation. It is preparing us for the vindication of God's character. And if this is the message that swallows up every other subject, then beloved, it is time to put the pettiness aside and allow this message to swallow up Every other subject, everything that divides us must be swallowed up in the righteousness of Christ. This is the love that we need to be contemplating at this time. And if we have not begun to do so already, beloved, I pray that tonight is our starting point. And I pray that we continue on, that we follow on even to know the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to close right here. Uh, there are so many other things that we would have gotten into, but... Some of this stuff is just so sweet that you just have to really spend time to break it into pieces. But we're able to go through an overview, go through some general things and point out some of the books where you can get it. You can go to teachservices.com, teachservices.com. You can go there. You can pick up the book or just go to Amazon and type in the title of the book by E.T. E. Jones or E.J. Wagner. Look around. Look. Research. You see how you do research for school? You got to find that information. You got to study this. Pretend you're in medical school. When you want something, you go and you get it. You figure out how to get it. You get it done. Act as though you are in medical school. You need to know this because this is a matter of your eternal life, my eternal life. I had to look for this thing. Nobody just came over here and said, hey, no, no, no. I had to, first of all, God is the one that came and gave the interest. And then after that, I got thirsty and hungry. And blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Then I started looking everywhere. I need to know, I need to know this thing for myself. I can't just wait on somebody to teach me, or to, somebody to explain X, Y, and Z to me. No, I got to find this. I need to spend the time. I need to do some digging and some research. So 
So you can go to teachservices.com. We're just a, a, a vessel, a, a supplement to this. But your experience is when you're sitting down and the divine teacher will be by your side, teaching you these very things, like speaking to you directly. And nobody can go around telling you, no, no, you know what your Lord has told you. So teachservices.com, you can get the books there or, or, um, or, or, uh, or Amazon. And there are other places where you can find it, the 1888 Message Study Committee. They have some great stuff as well to get it from. Just do research. Look into it. Reach out, reach out to us. Become our friends on Facebook. Reach out to us. Last Ray Ministries at gmail.com. Clear Distinction Ministries at gmail.com. Reach out to us. And we could continue to talk a little bit further to help you um, as you continue to study. I mean, in an unbiased way, of course, uh, reading directly from, from the sources. And Christ is going to lead. Christ is going to swell this message. He's going to swell this message. So come on. I want to be a part of that team. I want to be a part of that team. I, 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 I don't want to be preaching all this stuff. And then after that, be a, so God help us all. And I believe he's helping us right now. And the work that he began with us, he will surely perform it into the day of Jesus Christ. So we will close with a word of prayer. You want to pray for us, Pastor Kogu? Okay. If that's all right. All right. Our Father, our Maker, and our Redeemer, in your eternal purpose, you foresaw this day. That's why you direct our life, you protect and spare our life from many danger. And the listeners also, you have intended their life to be prepared for the glorification of your life in a human being. Help us to see that we do not have to be lost because you have gotten the job done. All we need to know is to know what is for us and to claim it by faith. Lord, please help us to understand it's about life. And this life doesn't even belong to us. It does belong to you. Help us to be very wise enough to know that we are making our last decision. Open our understanding that we can see the fourth angel. Open our mind and help us to understand. Bless us again. It was a very good Sabbath. The precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So as we're just about to end the stream, brothers and sisters, just know that a lot of what we're talking about, we've gone through it in our school, the prophets. Um, so you can always go back to them and really, you know, excavate through them and study to show yourself approved. So we just want to wish you a blessed and a happy Sabbath that God may be with you. And we look forward to continuing to study along with you and to